Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. This is Justin Davis from Drone Camps, and today I have the pleasure of giving you the full review of the Lumineer QAV-X. This is the Sharpoo Edition frame. I have the three mil bottom plate on here and some really, really nice race spec components on here. So this has been my favorite quad so far this year uh, and also one of the lightest. It's an amazing quad. Power to weight ratio is through the ceiling with this quad. Um, it's the ultimate freestyle quad if you really want to set it up for that. It's super lightweight in the air. Um, I gotta highly recommend the Luminaire 1300 batteries. 1300 is the exact perfect size for this and you can put it a bottom mount setup on there. They have two slots on each side for a Velcro strap to go down and around it. So the center of gravity on this is amazing. Um, it's, it's perfectly centered. So let's go ahead, let's talk a little bit more about the specs and go over the frame. Uh, and what I used with it, I'll show you in the video description down below and you can check out what I use to set up yours and get the same kind of performance out of yours that I got out of mine, which is super, super, super awesome. So before we dig right into the specs and start talking about what I used on mine, let's talk about the low profile look of this frame. I mean, it is amazing. Look how low profile this thing is. This thing is such a short stack. It's amazing. I, I love the low profile quad frames right now and this one, it has it all. It has a super short stack. It has a, a pretty decently protected camera in the front. It's not really sticking way out the front like I've seen some of these low profile uh, totally exposed. So you do have some closure here for the camera which is really nice. Um, I top mounted my antennas there and uh, I did not use this back plate. There is a back plate that comes here that you can mount your GoPro to. Um, so that's kind of nice and you can run a strap um, long ways through there. There's a spot for it. But I really do like the way this looks um, from the side. It is super, super, super thin. And this three mil bottom plate on here, I was a little bit worried about three mil, but I've been flying this for a few weeks now and I usually wait until I really get to know something before I do these reviews for you guys so I can give you an honest opinion on really what's going on with the whole setup. Now let's go ahead and get started by talking about the motors first because the motors are, are really a, a favorite part of this entire uh, build for me. The frame is great and there's lots of good things to say about the frame but the motors are really what make this thing sing. Uh, we have Lumineer, those are the RX2205-12 motors. They are the newest motors right now besides the Schizos and they're essentially the same specs as the Schizo motors without the ceramic bearings and these are actually a little bit more economically priced so you're looking at uh, $25.99 a motor for these so they are fairly lightweight. I'll go ahead and turn on my scale for you. Uh, I think I'm getting 24 to 25 grams. I got this extra motor here. Yeah, 25 grams on the motor. So the power to rate ratio is super, super awesome on this Sharpoo frame. Um, and I, I can't believe how light the entire frame is with all the gear on there. So I'm going to see if I can weigh that for you real quick. Move this out of the way just a little bit here. Okay, so we're at zero. And move that so you can see it. 271 grams. That is super light for a five inch quad. Now getting back to the motors, these are 2400 kV, so they do have a pretty decent kV rating on them. You're going to get a lot of power out of those. Um, and by the way, they are, they are efficient up to a 4S battery. You don't want to run anything more than a 4S on these. These do have a max burst rate of around 32 amps. Um, so if you go much above that, 
you're going to risk burning out your motors. And also in my testing guys, you want to make sure that you have your PID set correctly because if you don't have the right PID tune on this quad, your motors are going to get pretty hot uh, because of the, the stress on the motor and um, it's going to have the the wrong performance set up. So you want to make sure you find some, some PIDs that work for somebody else and go ahead and add those on your quad uh, in beta flight or clean flight or if you're using race flight you can do that too but you guys that are watching this for the first time and you're just getting into quad racing I'm gonna make sure that you know that 2205 is the most popular motor size in the race industry right now that you you can find on the internet most of the guys that I fly with are flying 2205s on around 200 size quad frames even on 180s as well so this is a 210 like I said 200 and 210 is very very relevant right now and that's what most of the big manufacturers are making uh, their quads in that frame size now let's take a moment to talk about the camera that I chose for my Sharpoo uh, 210 I, I use the Lumineer 1200 now this camera is one of the highest resolution cameras that get FPV offers it is a CMOS but it's also 16 by 9 uh, it's a decent camera for for what I need it for um, and if you have goggles that allow 16 by 9 that really really helps so you don't get a squashed image but the, the TVL on this is quite high it's 1200 TVL and you can run it on NTSC or PAL so you can switch over uh, with the OSD menu that's included with it um, PAL is set to the default by the way so if you want to switch it over make sure that you use the provided OSD cord and you can go in and make changes. But the cool thing about this camera is that it does accept 5 to 22 volts. Uh, so you have quite a large voltage range on this camera by Luminera. And I have the back off so you can kind of see into the, to the back of the quad here where it connects. And you've got plenty of room in here to make as much tilt as you want with this frame, which is kind of nice. So I can go way, way, way up there if I want to. Uh, like Maddie stunts, I can get super, super vert with this camera. But I usually have it to about right here. It's pretty good for me. And it does have a 2.8 millimeter lens on there, and that's pretty standard for most FPV cameras right now. Also, most people don't know about this, but it does have an over voltage protection in there. So, a lot of other cameras on the market. I've put too much power to them before coming from the board. I hooked it up to 12 volt when it was a 5 volt camera. Boom, I smoked the camera. Uh, so this one's nice that it does have over voltage protection in there. So if you put too much juice, you're not gonna lose your $50 camera. So uh, this, this camera is around the $50 mark. So it is a more expensive camera, but it is a nice camera. Now my recommendation for putting a receiver on this one is you wanna use S-Bus on this and you wanna use that FR Sky. It's the X4R uh, S-Bus compatible receiver and it's a challenge to put your receiver on this quad because you want everything to be as clean as possible. You don't want stuff hanging out out here where it can get damaged in your crashes. And you want everything to fit neatly inside the stack. So what I did was I got a pinless X4R or you can take the pins off yourself if you're handy with a soldering iron. But I tucked mine in down here right underneath the PDB. And what I did was I wrapped it with some heat shrink so that it doesn't short out on the board. You don't want any of those uh, circuits connecting with the bottom of this PDB because you'll short out your whole quad. Um, so make sure you do that. And then I ran my wires up through here and up and out the top. And I used a couple zip ties with some heat shrink and it works just fine. Uh, and I've never had any problems with them being up here because they are not long enough actually to reach down into the props uh, when I do have a bottom crash. So they go to about here and that's it. So pretty nice. Now the flight controller that I chose for mine is the SP Racing F3. It's an Acro edition. Uh, it is running the latest version of Beta Flight, and it's pretty easy to flash, you guys. You just set that up before you're going to do your build. Make sure you flash your board with the latest edition before you even start soldering any wires to it. That's always going to be the first step. But I'm going to highly recommend that you use Beta Flight on this quad because it will fly way better and way smoother. Um, and you have a little more control with Betaflight. I, I do like it. 
Now let's go ahead and take a look at the back end of this quad. You'll notice that there's an extra little piece of carbon fiber back here and it mounts through the existing bolts that go to the standoffs underneath here. So it's just a little bit of extra protection for your VTX that's hiding under here and it goes up to about this slot right here um, just behind the camera and you have your antenna coming out here. So it's nice that they provide a couple extra holes for putting zip ties through and you can really securely put your VTX in place. Uh, I use a little VHB up inside here too as well to make it stay away from the frame. Just a little safety buffer between the frame and the VTX. Now the VTX that I chose for this is the TX5G uh, 2R. This is 200 milliwatt race band and it has four channels on here, or excuse me, four bands and 32 channels that you can choose from. It does have a push button on here which is nice the way they have this set up because I can get to it if I look just inside that hole there you see that little uh, little brass button inside there you can get in there with a tool and you can poke that and you can change your channels or you can hold it for two seconds and you can change the band um, the different bands that come on this VTX are FS, IRC and you have Lumineer, DJI on band 2 Band 3 is going to be Boss Cam A, and then Band 4 is going to be Race Band. So if you do get one of these and you don't have a Race Band module on your Fat Sharks or otherwise, you can switch. So you don't have to use Race Band on this. You can switch um, to a Boss Cam channel or that Lumineer band as well, uh, or even the FS IRC channel. And this VTX weighs in at about 7.5 grams, so it really is pretty light. It also includes a microphone on here. Uh, I'm not sure I'll use that. And that standard uh, Lumineer style connector on the very bottom that comes along with this in the package. And as you can see here, I chose the TBS Triumph antenna. Very, very good antenna, and it is decently durable. And I have all of this hidden up underneath here so that I won't have any problems with um, damaging the where it connects onto the VTX. So make sure you hide that up nice and tight underneath there. Now we get to talk about my favorite aspect uh, of this quad so far, and it's going to be that Power OSD. I've got Power OSD Pro on here. And that one's around $35, but you know what? This is pretty cool because this is an OSD and PDB in one. Uh, very, very cool to me because it has a direct solder from the camera and the VTX have their own spot right on the OSD. So you don't have to do any splicing of cable, uh, video cable from your camera to your VTX like you would normally do. Now you just go straight to the power OSD and I'll show that on screen here and that is, those connect directly to the PDB, which is kind of neat. Now you can do a direct pinless solder on that. You're, of course, you're gonna do that with this build, so anything on this build is gonna to be totally pinless. There's not gonna be a single pin on here. Uh, and it, all, it makes for a really nice, clean stack. Now, also a tip for you guys, if you're building this one, make sure that you put something between the PDB and the flight controller because you don't have a whole lot of room here in between these two stacks. Now you don't want two pieces of metal uh, or solder touching and you'll get a you get a short out. So what I do is I take a piece of plastic coated paper um, and I stick in between there. Or just a simple piece of plastic will do to keep things from touching once you do put your stack together because you know what? When you plug your quad in for the first time you might see that magic smoke. So to avoid the magic smoke try to do that and that will help you out for sure. A couple more cool features about this Power OSD Pro is the fact that it does have an onboard regulator. It's a 5 volt regulator and it has a 10 volt regulator for the video transmitter and the FPV camera. So you do have a um, very, very nice setup here for those, like I mentioned before. It does have an onboard power filter as well, so that's nice. Uh, and it has a flight timer display on the OSD. The OSD is super, super, super clean. Uh, you have your your power voltage display as well, um, and you, you have your primary battery voltage is, is displayed on there in volts. And it has a two-stage low battery alarm on there, which is kind of nice. And the last and probably one of the most important features that this Power OSD has is it has radio reception meter RSSI monitoring on screen. So you can see that you have a solid connection to your receiver. Now let's talk about the ESCs that I chose for my Lumineer. QAVX 
Uh, I chose the Luminaire 30 amp BO Helis mainly because I like to be able to use BO Heli Suite. It's very, very nice. If you're just getting into this, make sure you're familiar with BO Heli Suite software. It allows you to do a lot of changes on your ESCs. It allows you to get the current firmware updated to them from your PC. So you just plug in to your flight controller with a USB port and then you can open it up in BO Heli power up your copter with the props off and you can really make some amazing changes on here. Um, not only updating your firmware, but if you have a problem when you build this, sometimes we had to switch one wire around uh, in previous days before BO Heli to make the motor spin the right direction. Now you don't have to do that with BO Heli Suite. You can go in there and you can reverse the motor or change the direction. So very important when you're building your quad that you, you flash your ESCs before you really start flying it. And I also have to mention about these ESCs, they are super, super light weighing in with the wires and the board itself. You're gonna get around eight grams a piece on these. So total weight on your quad is gonna be way less than if you're using some super huge 30 amp ESCs like I've shown you in the past. The favorite uh, ESCs that I've shown on one of my older quads there, the GB190. It has pretty heavy ESCs on there, almost look like airplane ESCs, but these fit nicely inside the frame. They don't hang off the side, and they, once you have heat shrink on them, I, you can almost barely tell they're there. They're, so they're super low profile as well. They do have one shot on here, and that's it's fairly standard these days. You want to make sure that you get one shot, um, and it has dampened, um, dampened light as well, and motor braking on here. So. Um, very, very current with all the specs for ESCs right now. Um, the performance of this is, is going to be really, really high. You have that Scilabs processor in here. When you go in BO Heli Suite, make sure you select that when you're going to go flash these ESCs. They are the Scilabs um, processor, so very important when you're flashing them. Now one last thing about my setup you need to know about is the prop selection. I used to fly these Dow bullnose props. They're those 50-40 props that everybody loves and they're almost indestructible. I, you know, once they bend, they're kind of hard to, to bend back, but you can do it a few times and get away with it. Now these also will bend a little bit in the crashes and I have been able to bend them back. These are the props by Lumineer. And these are really, really nice because they do have a different profile here. They're a little smoother around the edges. They're not quite as flattened off on the tips. Uh, not as much of a bull nose here. So these actually fly a lot smoother for this quad. Uh, I don't know if they were directly developed for this setup, but they go perfect with it. So I would highly recommend these Lumineer props for your QAVX. Super, super smooth and really, really lightweight. And finally, guys, I would highly recommend not running a GoPro on the top of this. If you can stand it, just record with your DVR in your Fat Sharks or your external DVR uh, if you're using like quantum goggles. But uh, just, just keep the GoPro off this. You're going to keep it way, way lighter. You're going to get a longer flight time and it's going to float like crazy in air mode. So if you can, keep all that GoPro weight off this one and just fly it like it's meant to be flown. I mean, it's gonna give you so much better performance without that GoPro on top. Okay guys, so that's pretty much it for the QAVX. It is definitely something to consider. The price point is a little higher than some of the other quads on the market right now, but you know what? You get what you pay for, folks, and this quad kicks ass. That's all I gotta say about this quad. Um, I'm gonna leave you with a little bit of flying footage um, so you can check out some of the characteristics of the flight. Some of the PIDs haven't been totally tuned in some of the footage, so I do apologize for that. If there's any wobble, um, you'll just have to deal with it. So uh, it's getting more tuned all the time, and I do have much better tune on it right now, but uh, I am lacking a, a whole lot of footage. So enjoy the footage, guys, and thanks again for watching this review of the QAVX. This is the Sharpo Edition 210 frame. Super cool.
Hey guys, thanks again for watching that episode. Please do click subscribe so you can see all the newest drones coming out each week on the Drone Camps channel. We're going to show you tons of new stuff coming out in the drone industry. I'm Justin Davis from Drone Camps. Thanks again. I'll see you on the next one.